the Tlingita an indigenous people of the Pacific northwest coast of North America. Their name for themselves is Lingut, meaning people of the tides. The Russian name Kolishi or the related German name Kulishan may be encountered referring to the people in older historical literature, such as Shelikov's 1796 map of Russian America. The Tlingita are a matrilineal society that developed in the temperate rainforest of the southeast Alaska coast and the Alexander Archipelago. The Tlingite maintained a complex hunter-gatherer culture based on semi-sedentary management of fisheries. An inland group, known as the Inland Tlingite, inhabits the far northwestern part of the province of British Columbia and the southern Yukon Territory in Canada. Territory The greatest territory historically occupied by the Tlingite extended from the Portland Canal along the present border between Alaska and British Columbia, north to the coast just southeast of the Copper River Delta in Alaska. The Tlingite occupied almost all of the Alexander Archipelago, except the southernmost end of Prince of Wales Island and its surroundings, where the Kaigani Haida moved just before the first encounters with European explorers. The coastal Tlingite tribes controlled one of the mountain passes into the Yukon interior. They were broken down in three tribes the Chilkit Tlingite along Chilkit River and on Chilkit Peninsula, the Chilkut Tlingite and the Taku Tlingite along Taku River. Inland, the Tlingite occupied areas along the major rivers that pierce the coast mountains and St. Elias Mountains and flow into the Pacific, including the Alsek, Tatshanshini, Chilkit, Taku, and Stikina Rivers. With regular travel up these rivers, the Tlingite developed extensive trade networks with Athabascan tribes of the interior, and commonly intermarried with them. From this regular travel and trade, a few relatively large populations of Tlingite settled around Atlan, Teslin, and Tajish lakes, whose headwaters flow from areas near the headwaters of the Taku River. Delineating the modern territory of the Tlingite is complicated because they are spread across the border between the United States and Canada. They lack designated reservations. Other complex legal and political concerns make the situation confusing, and there is a relatively high level of mobility among the population, as well as overlapped territory with various Athabascan peoples, such as the Taltan, Kaska and Tajish. In Canada, the modern communities of Atlan, British Columbia, Teslin, Yukon, and Carcross, Yukon have reserves under the representative interior Tlingite populations. The territory occupied by the modern Tlingite people in Alaska is not restricted to particular reservations, unlike most tribes in the contiguous 48 states. This is the result of the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act, which established regional corporations throughout Alaska with complex portfolios of land ownership rather than bounded reservations administered by tribal governments. The corporation in the Tlingite region is Sealaska Corporation, which serves the Tlingite as well as the Haida and Simshian in Alaska. Tlingite people as a whole participate in the commercial economy of Alaska. As a consequence, they live in typically American nuclear family households with private ownership of housing and land. Many also possess land allotments from Sealaska or from earlier distributions predating ANCSA. Despite the legal and political complexities, the territory historically occupied by the Tlingite can be reasonably designated as their modern homeland. Tlingite people today consider the land from around Yakut at south through the Alaskan Panhandle, and including the lakes in the Canadian interior, as being Lingut Aani, the land of the Tlingite. The extant Tlingite territory can be roughly divided into four major sections, paralleling ecological, linguistic, and cultural divisions. The southern Tlingite occupy the region south of Frederick Sound and live in the northernmost reaches of the western Red Cedar Forest. Northern Tinglet live north of Frederick Sound to Cape Spencer, and including Glacier Bay and the Lynn Canal, they occupy the warmest and richest of the Sitka Spruce and Western Hemlock Forests. 
be inland to Lingai live along large interior lakes and the drainage of the Taku River as well as in the southern Yukon Territory, and subsist in a manner similar to their Athabascan neighbors in the mixed spruce taiga. The Gulf Coast to Lingai live along a narrow strip of coastline backed by steep mountains and extensive glaciers, north of Cape Spencer, and along the coast of the Gulf of Alaska to control a bay and kayak island. The territory can be battered by Pacific storms. The trade and cultural interactions between each of these Tlingite groups and their disparate neighbors, the differences in food harvest practices, and the dialectical differences contribute to these identifications. The classifications are supported by similar self-identifications among the Tlingite tribes or Quant's culture. The Tlingite culture is multifaceted and complex, a characteristic of Northwest Pacific Coast people with access to easily exploited rich resources. In Tlingite culture a heavy emphasis is placed upon family and kinship, and on a rich tradition of oratory. Wealth and economic power are important indicators of rank, but so is generosity and proper behavior. All signs of good breeding and ties to aristocracy. Art and spirituality are incorporated in nearly all areas of Tlingite culture, with even everyday objects such as spoons and storage boxes decorated and imbued with spiritual power and historical beliefs of the Tlingi. Tlingite society is divided into two moieties, the raven and the eagle. These in turn are divided into numerous clans, which are subdivided into lineages or house groups. They have a matrilineal kinship system, with descent and inheritance passed through the mother's line. These groups have heraldic crests, which are displayed on totem poles, canoes, feast dishes, house posts, weavings, jewelry, and other art forms. The Talingi passed down at Dotau or blankets that represented trust. Only a Talingite Indian can inherit one but they can also pass it down to someone they trust who becomes responsible for caring for it but does not rightfully own it. Philosophy and Religion Tlingite thought and belief, although never formally codified, was historically a fairly well-organized philosophical and religious system whose basic axioms shaped the way Tlingite people viewed and interacted with the world around them. Tlingi were traditionally animists, and hunters ritually purified themselves before hunting animals. Shamans, primarily men, cure diseases, influenced weather, aided in hunting, predicted the future, and protected people against witchcraft. Between 1886 and 1895, in the face of their shamans' inability to treat old-world diseases including smallpox, many Tlingite people converted to Orthodox Christianity. Russian Orthodox missionaries had translated their liturgy into the Tlingite language. It has been argued that they saw Eastern Orthodox Christianity as a way of resisting assimilation to the American way of life, which was associated with Presbyterianism. After the introduction of Christianity, the Tlingite belief system began to erode. Today, some young Tlingi look back towards their traditional tribal religions and worldview for inspiration, security, and a sense of identity. While many elders converted to Christianity, contemporary Tlingite reconcile Christianity and the traditional culture language. The Tlingite language is spoken by the Tlingite people of southeast Alaska and western Canada. It is a branch of the Nardene language family. It is well known not only for its complex grammar and sound system, but also for using certain phonemes unheard in almost any other language. Tlingite has an estimated 200 to 400 native speakers in the United States and 100 speakers in Canada. The speakers are bilingual or near bilingual in English. Extensive effort is being put into revitalization programs in southeast Alaska to revive and preserve the Tlingite language and its culture. See Alaska Heritage Institute and the University of Alaska, southeast both have Tlingite language programs and community classes are held in Klukwan and Angoon. History Various cultures of indigenous people have continuously occupied the Alaska Territory for thousands of years, leading to the Tlingite 
human culture with elements related to the Tulingite originated around 10,000 years ago near the mouths of the Skeena and Nuss rivers. The historic Tulingites' first contact with Europeans came in 1741 with Russian explorers. Spanish explorers followed in 1775. Tulingi maintained their independence but suffered from epidemics of smallpox and other infectious diseases brought by the Europeans. The Native Americans had no immunity to such endemic Eurasian diseases, which had entered Europe centuries before. Food Food is a central part of Tulingite culture, and the land is an abundant provider. Most of the richness of intertidal life found on the beaches of southeast Alaska can be harvested for food, though eating off the beach could provide a fairly healthy and varied diet. Eating nothing but beach food is considered contemptible among the Tulingite and a sign of poverty. Indeed, shamans and their families were required to abstain from all food gathered from the beach, and men might avoid eating beach food before battles or strenuous activities in the belief that it would weaken him spiritually and perhaps physically as well. Thus for both spiritual reasons as well as to add some variety to the diet, the Tlingite harvest many other resources for food besides those they easily find outside their front doors. No other food resource receives as much emphasis as salmon, however, seal and game are both close seconds. Halibut, shellfish, and seaweed traditionally provided food in the spring, while late spring and summer bring seal and salmon. Summer is a time for gathering wild and tame berries, such as salmon berry, soap berry, and currants. In fall, sea otters are hunted. Herring and eulachon are also important staples that can be eaten fresh or dried and stored for later use. Fish provide meat, oil, and eggs. Sea mammals, such as sea lions and sea otters, are used for food and clothing materials. In the forests near their homes, Tlingite hunted jare, bear, mountain goats and other small mammals notable Tlingite people. Larry McNeil, Tilly Paul, William Paul, Elizabeth Peretrovich, Chief Shakes, Walter Sobolev, scholar, elder, and religious leader.